The Xbox Series S was an ingenious idea by Microsoft, combining the convenience of a console with a streamlined budget that would appeal to the masses. Add Game Pass into that equation, and you have a pretty solid budget gaming setup with a lot to play. The current life cycle of the console is looking to be a bit shaky as it crumbles under the massive weight of highly demanding current gen games, but for many gamers, it still represents one of the most affordable entry points into modern gaming. While consoles and PCs are quite different in both form and functionality, it's always an interesting prospect to see how a console fares against a PC, especially given the budget proposition of the Series S. How much would it actually cost to build a PC that's comparable to the Xbox Series S in terms of specs and performance? With this feature, we will try to find exactly that as we run down freshly bought individual parts and build a gaming PC. And please note that these prices are relevant to the time of writing. CPU The CPU on the Xbox Series S is quite powerful for the price. It's a custom Zen 2 based chip with 8 physical cores running at 3.6 GHz, and it drops down to 3.4 GHz when simultaneous multi-threading is enabled. This generation of consoles has made quite the leap when it comes to CPU performance, boasting a great combination of single-core and multi-core efficiency. For our system of choice, we're going with the AMD Ryzen 5 3600, which comes packed with 6 cores and 12 threads that goes up to 4.2 GHz when in boost mode. It might not have the larger L3 cache or the latest architecture of the more recent Ryzen chips, and it definitely does not match in terms of cores, but it should prove to be a great match to our GPU without leaving any performance on the cutting floor. Going with an older gen CPU also helps us in saving a few precious bucks without compromising on the authenticity of the build, and you can find the Ryzen 5 3600 going for about $75 on Amazon. GPU as for the GPU, the Xbox Series S features a paired back version of the custom chip that powers the Xbox Series X. It's based on the RDNA 2 architecture and has 12 compute units, CUs, each running at a frequency of 1.55 GHz that comes together for a total compute power of around 4 teraflops, which is just a third of the raw grunt that the Xbox Series X boasts. However, we also get to see hardware ray tracing support on the chip, so we're going to be needing a solid GPU to compete on a budget. Checking all of those boxes, and our GPU of choice is the RX 6600, which comes packed with 8GB of GDDR6 RAM. It shares the same RDNA 2 architecture of the Series S, but has a much more solid performance with a raw grunt of almost 9 teraflops. Of course, the Series S has the advantage of hardware-specific optimizations on its side, so the difference between the two chips is not as wide as it seems, but we are definitely at a bit of an advantage over here. The GPU also pairs nicely with our CPU, ensuring both of them can reach 100% utilization without encountering any bottlenecks. It can be found at around $220 on Amazon. RAM for the RAM, we're going with the crucial 16GB kit of the DDR4 kind that runs at 3200MHz. It's not the fanciest looking RAM with RGB shenanigans, but it gets the job done. And at an asking price of just $54 on Amazon, you really can't complain. The Xbox Series S shares the same 10GB of GDDR6 memory dynamically between the CPU and the GPU but our machine has a bigger advantage with separate CPU memory and GPU memory, and each is quite sufficient for our purposes of 1080p to 1440p gaming at comfortable frame rates. SSD, 1TB and 500GB One of the biggest advancements the current generation has brought over from the last is the addition of a PCIe 4.0 SSD, which has not only dramatically brought the load times down, but also opened up new avenues for developers by letting them use the disk for loading assets in certain cases as opposed to the RAM. Many current gen games also require similarly high speed storage on the PC as well, and Windows Direct Storage API has enabled developers to replicate the same behavior on PC. As such, we'll be needing a similarly high speed SSD, and we're going with the crucial P310. The 500GB variant comes at around $46, and the 1TB will cost you another roughly $30 premium, totaling to about $76 on Amazon. Motherboard The Asus B550M will house all of our components in place. It's not the fanciest board out there, but it has all of the required features at an affordable price. 
It supports the CPU without needing any BIOS upgrades, has two RAM slots along with PCIe 4.0, it's available for about $120 in micro ATX form on Amazon, and at that price, you again cannot complain. PSU It's always a good practice to invest in a premium PSU, because the performance and reliability of all of these components are sorely dependent upon whether or not they're getting enough power in a stable manner or not. As such, always make sure to go with an 80 plus certified piece from a reputed brand. And we're going with the MSI 650W 80 plus bronze power supply, which comes for around $70 on Amazon. Case. The case of our choice is the Cooler Master Q300L. It comes from a reputable brand, and while it may not be the most stylish case on the market, it's compatible with our micro ATX motherboard, has good room for cable management, and is a tampered glass side panel that's also a good bonus to have. You can find it for about $40 on Amazon. Keyboard, mouse, and HDMI. We're obviously going to be needing a keyboard and a mouse for our day-to-day -day operations, and the combo of our choice comes from Verbatim. It's the wireless kind, so don't expect to be gaming at super low latencies with this kit, but it should be more than enough for regular use. Priced at just $20, this keyboard and mouse combo is a no-brainer, and you can find it on Amazon. We're going to need an HDMI cable to connect our system to a display, and for that purpose, we're taking the Anchor Certified High Speed Cable. It's from a reputable brand, good enough for our purposes, and it's priced at $10 on Amazon. Controller. To replicate the playing experience of a gaming console, we're going to need a controller as well. We're going with the Xbox Series S wireless controller, which is priced at $70 on Amazon. It's a premium product with a proven track record of superb ergonomics, low latency, and detailed haptics that come together to enrich the player experience to a higher degree. You can always opt for a cheaper alternative, but for the sake of authenticity, we're going with this controller for our build. OS Windows 11 Home 64-bit The Xbox Series S comes loaded with its custom operating system, but on the PC side of things, we will need to spend extra to procure a licensed version of Windows 11, which will cost you around $140. Going the Windows route practically ensures compatibility with all modern AAA titles, and the Windows Direct Storage API also helps with smoothing out the performance. Conclusion in conclusion, the PC that we have proposed will cost you around $865 when going with a 500GB SSD, or around $895 if you spring for a 1TB SSD. It is a lot more expensive than the Series S, which costs just at $380 for the 512GB variant and $430 for the 1TB variant, but the performance of this system is going to be a tad more better than the Xbox Series S, ensuring that most modern AAA games run smoothly at 60fps on 1440p resolutions while maintaining decent graphics options. It's a tad more future-proof than the console, as plenty of current-gen games are already struggling to run on the Xbox Series S, and we have just reached half of this generation's life cycle. While the price difference between the two is certainly a lot, you could shorten the gap by going with used parts or opting for older generation tech. But the intent of this feature isn't to compare and objectively announce a winner between console and PC, but to give real estimation of how much it would cost to build something similar now that the system is almost five years old at this point. It's also going to be interesting to see how this gap pans out going forward, so stay tuned for that in the future. And that'll be about it for this one. If you guys like what we're doing at Gaming Vault, please consider subscribing to our channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.